here shortly. So I want to welcome Janet Funk. She's a uh, commissioned artist that specializes in the scratch board technique, uh, specializing with wildlife and pet portraits. She's been doing this practically her whole life. She's been doing the scratch, scratch board technique for almost uh, a little over 40 years. Um, she's an amazing, gifted, talented artist that has these unique um, products that can be ordered and, and commissioned. And so I'm just really excited to have her join us here at the Herb Festival. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. I appreciate you asking me. <laughs> um, I think today, um, uh, first of all, I, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about myself. Um, I was raised in Colorado um, in the foothills and um, attended college there. And then I moved up after several years, moved up to Spokane, Washington, met my husband. And then we moved to Kansas, and I have uh, two children that are not kids anymore. In fact, both of them graduated from college this past week, one of them today. And we were supposed to be in um, down in Waco, Texas today for my daughter's graduation. And so we've been kind of a busy family um, this week. Um, although no traveling, of course, it's all been online. Um, in fact, she is texting me right now. Anyway, um, uh, then, um, lately, um, my husband has retired from Boeing and we bought a trailer and now I am going to be a traveling artist as soon as the, uh, pandemic is, uh, let loose a little bit and we're able to start doing a little bit more art shows. So um, I want to tell you a little bit more about what I do. Um, Scratchboard is not only a technique, it is actually a masonite board that um, is a hard board. It has a layer of white clay and then a layer of black India ink. Um, this black India ink is etched off and then you are left with a white image um, below and that is is what you usually see as the subject and then it can be enhanced with colored inks but we'll go into that a little bit later um the first thing um i wanted to talk about a lot of people say well oh yeah my, i started doing scratch board in kindergarten so did I, it's where I fell in love with it. Um, and it wasn't until I was in college that um, I got into the actual scratch board. Scratch art is wonderful for kids. Um, this is what the box looks like. And it's got all the different colors underneath. And usually, I don't know whether you can see that, but there's actually a print on here that you can follow. And um, they've got all kinds of in the box. Um, it shows this design. It shows the feathers hanging off. Do you see that? I guess um, the stars, the butterflies, and all kinds of stuff. That is scratch art. Scratch board just has the white clay underneath. Um, so that's the difference there. Um, and what I'll show you first of all is when we first um, the first step to making a scratch board um, is you get your subject and you can draw it. I use a lot of photographs um, and then um, I use a piece of paper to transfer it and I'll draw it on. Here this side has a little bit of white chalk to it. Um, Mike, I need you to lower it so they can start seeing what I'm doing here. When I have the chalk lines, put the chalk lines on. Oops, the camera just tilted a little bit there. Can you see that? Let's bring it down a little bit more, all the way down, so that they can see that. I'll move my water out of the way. Does everybody have there's something to drink? I got my cup of coffee and I've got my glass of water here. Um, now, the question is can you see? 
I'm checking on my computer here. And I don't know whether you can actually see those little white lines. If I hold it up real close, maybe you can see those white lines. That's actual chalk. And what I've drawn here are these two dogs here. There's a dog here and a dog here. We've had to do a little bit of um, add-on. These are some people that have some dogs, but both dogs were laying down. Can you see that? You have to shine it. Yeah, right on it. Yeah. Anyway, um, and so I've had to add on um, some other legs to it, do a little bit of photoshopping and to get both of their dogs on there. And I'll be working on that a little bit, not so much today, because I wanted to show you the other ones that I've got going, and we'll work on the other ones. The other ones I've got going is this little pretty little kitty cat that I've got. And I've just started working with this cat, but I just wanted to get far enough along so that you guys can see that. Get that up close. And we'll work on that one a little bit. Whoa, there it goes. My camera went down a little bit further. And then I've got a little puppy dog. And I will show you the different tools that I work with and to get the different techniques. And that's the beginnings of the puppy dog. Now, before we go into that, I'd like to show you the tools that I've got. Now, of course, when you're working with the scratch art, this is what comes in the box. It's one of the um, little sharp pencils. And that's what you, with the scratch art, that's great. But when you're working with scratch board, you're wanting something a little bit sharper. So I go ahead and work with my Zacto knife, mostly, or to begin with. And the Zacto knife usually starts off with a number eight, I believe. You're actually wanting a number 11. A number 11 is a little bit thinner. And the, with the gold tips, I don't know whether you can see the different colors in there as I flash it back and forth. There's actually a gold tip on this. It makes it a little bit stronger and they last a little bit longer. Then I've got two brushes. Now I can get that from Walmart. That's easy. And I get my scratch board from Blix Art Supply. Um, the... Um, uh, you can also get it from Amazon. It's about the same price, but I don't like the shipments. Thank you. I don't like how when it's shipped in, um, it um, a lot of times there's damage to it, where Blix packs it a lot better. So I like that a little bit better. Um, then I have got um, what's called fiberglass brushes. This little pin right here, it's very hard and it's scratchy and it will scratch off and off on the um, scratch board. It'll scratch that black off and leave the white underneath. And then at the end, I'll show you a little bit more. The end of a picture when I'm finished, this is also a fiberglass brush, but it's called a jewelry cleaner. Um, and I bought both of these from Blix or for, on Amazon. This is a soft brush and it leaves almost a um, out of focus look. So you wouldn't want to use it close to the face or on the eyes, but like a paw that's a back paw. So it would make it out of, out of focus. Let me show you a little bit of when I'm working on the scratch board. Now, I work with a lot of, um, of pet portraits, but I also do wild animals. Um, and I'll show you a little bit other than, than that. Um, besides the, the pet portraits, I'll show you some wild animals a little bit. Um, now, I also use, some, some artists use gloves. I just put a towel down 
there's my daughter again saying mom um and this okay i need to turn i think this way so you can see a little bit better when i'm using a zacto knife and i am going to get a picture of that kitty i work with two different two different pictures of the cat at the same time um, I use a photograph that I've printed to get a bigger look of it. I also use my um, phone so I can zoom up and look a little bit closer. And right here, I'm going to go ahead and just show you. With the Zapto knife, I make real tiny, tiny little marks to show that hair. That. Um, and when you work with a Zacto knife, when you work with scratch board, your biggest um, friend is patience. Um, you want to go ahead and do a, a zillion little soft lines. A lot of people see the white and they go, well, if I push hard, I can get rid of that ink really fast and your best bet is to actually do let's see if i can find a little down here he's she's got in the cat picture she's got some fur that's going to be actually you have to take almost all of this red out of here and make it white so that when i put the color back in um you can actually see the red and it doesn't blend in and make it so much a grayish red. You want a nice, nice bright red in there. And so what I end up doing is, is just doing a whole bunch of little, little tiny, tiny lines. Um, when I'm working like this, um, I'm working actually from the back of the Zacto knife instead of the front. Oh, sorry, <laughs> just, my husband's sitting here making sure I don't move out of camera face, but um, I want to, I, I work with the back and not the front. Now when I'm doing, oh, even with the whiskers, I go ahead, I'll do one line all the time with the back of, and that's more of almost the side of my Zacto knife. With the Zacta, with the whiskers, you can do one line and you want to keep it nice and smooth. Um, the way you know when your Zacto knife needs to be changed, and then you have to change it almost with every um, picture you work on, is it will also, it will all of a sudden get kind of a, a grainy look to it. So that's what you're do a whole lot of little ones and that white will come through but you can see actually I haven't changed that Zacto knife for this and you can see that it's actually starting to get a little bit rough instead of nice smooth lines so that's how that's that has worked um, Let's see, I just want to make sure that I'm covering everything here. Oh, you know, before we go any further, I want to show you, and I went to print this out. Um, I wonder if I can pull it really fast. Um, I want to pull up a, let's see if this comes up on my screenshot it does yay Mike, can you zoom in on that and see if it shows there are different kinds of nope it doesn't focus nope it's out of focus no nope. okay um there are different kinds of lines um that right there would just been called hatching um you can do cross hatching and I think most everybody knows the difference between hatching is just one straight up and down up and down up and down 
your cross hatching goes not only down but across. Um, you would do that for texture such as uh, if you're wanting more of a linen look to it, um, then that's what you would use a cross hatch for. Um, also the stippling. Stippling means pretty much little dots. And again, I don't know whether we can zoom in enough, but on the nose of a cat and the nose of a dog, it is little dots that I use. Small, tiny little circles and use the Zapto knife for that because it's, I gotta do it down here. Just little tiny dots to do the nose. Um, and then of course, the, uh, you have your fur texture. Fur texture is kind of off and on, off and on instead of, um, uh, instead of doing it a, a solid area. Uh, let's see, okay, put that aside. And let's see, what else do we need to, let's go back to this kitty cat. Does anybody have any questions so far? No. Okay. Um, so that's what I want to show on the on the cat was was the fur texture coming in. You just use it over and over and over again. Now, what I will be doing the cat back here is the same um, fur texture as it is in front here, except for of course you're going backward here, this direction, I should say. Um, but I will, after I've used um, the Zacto knife with the short hair to go in here and, and um, make the hair, I will go in, remember I was telling you about the soft fiberglass brush? This is when I use that soft fiberglass brush. And I will brush over that area to give it a smeary, almost a smeary out of focus look. There goes my camera again, huh? Out of focus. It's out of focus. Okay. This is the next thing I'm going to show you. And I love how this little puppy is coming along. And yeah. Please put paper or something in between your pictures because your scratch board does scratch very easily when you're not meaning for it to. Um, this scratch board pen is marvelous. I love this new scratch board pen that I got. I had one that it looked very similar to this one except for it had a black tip and it was as thick as this one. So it was very hard to make all of the smaller marks. You had to really work with a corner of it. But this guy here is really nice. I can just come in here and make nice, smooth. This guy has soft fur. It's almost fuzzy and not, let's see, you're on top of my hand. Are you on top of my hand? Can you see that? Am I moving back way too far? He's got soft fur and those fiberglass um, brushes make the best soft fur that, that is just, you just work down and just keep on, go wherever your little bit of chalk line has directed you to go. Now when I've, I have, uh, I'll show you my picture here that helped, will help you know exactly where that fur, I kind of outline it as far as where that fur, the direction of that fur is going. And so when I come over here, I will go ahead and look at that and go, yep, I see that. That fur comes right down in here and it's gonna go that direction. And so I work right along with the same direction that fur is gonna go to. 
And that's, make sure that you blow your ink away because you'll end up with a pile of it and it will get all over everything. That's another problem with being on carpet. Make sure that you don't have a light colored carpet, which we do in here. My husband is probably gonna kill me when I have, I have to get it um, shampooed again. But um, you wanna put like a plastic covering over your carpets um, because you will get a lot of that black ink that comes off of these pictures onto the floor as you're working with it. Um, another thing, what is fiberglass brush? When I say fiberglass brush, that's exactly what it is, especially for children. Um, it can be very um, sharp and you can get splinters, fiberglass brush splinters onto there. So um, make sure that you, I've got wipe here, and then I will take my uh, towel and gently wipe it off every time it gets a little bit, um, a little bit too much uh, ink on there or dust, then, that, then I'll go ahead and, and uh, wipe it off with my towel. Um, some people ask, what's the first thing you work with? First thing I work with is usually the eyes. Um, and that is also the first thing I look for in a photograph um, to make sure your eyes are in focus, your eyes, your nose, things like that. Um, because if they're not in focus, you're gonna have a real difficult time with the rest of the picture um, if you were doing an animal. Um, the back of the head, the ears, all of that can be out of focus, but you wanna make sure if you're doing a pet portrait, those eyes are in focus because when they say that the eyes um, are the, the center of the soul or tell what the soul is about, it really helps with these. Um, you can just see the temperament of the animal in there. So, um, Make sure that when you're taking a photograph of your pet, if you're wanting to do your own pet, um, get down it at eye level with your pet. And uh, on eye level, their eye level, not yours, because looking down, you'll get the head being big and the legs being small and it won't look what you're wanting. Um, let me go back to, to um, my notes here and make sure that I am covering a little bit more. Uh, let's see, oh, um, after I have done the, the scratching and with the fiberglass bringing off that black ink, um, you're left with the white image. And let me show you a little bit. Um, if I, in fact, you can go back. Can you kind of swing the camera? You don't have to, to get close up, but you can swing it back here. Um, here's a pet portrait of one of the dogs that I've done before. And it's just a little beagle here. Let me hold that and you see if I can take it that way. And you can see that I've painted in the different colors of that beagle. And that is with colored ink. Both of the, uh, the, the scratch board itself and the colored ink is the ampersand brand. I find that that's the best that, uh, for me um, because I have a tendency of finding that it scratches unevenly if I, with other brands. Here's another one, and I want to show you the difference or the step. This one right now, now this is the scratch board technique, and I've, but I've used clay board. Clay board is just that clay without the black ink. And then I've added my own ink. And then scratched it, scratched and painted in different colors. So that's called clay board, but that's very similar to the scratch board technique. Um, let's see what I was going, oh, 
after it, I paint it in, um, I seal it with a clear varnish. This is what I use. Can you, you got that? It's uh, Krylon. It's UV protected and also makes it scratch resistant. This way, um, it brings out those colors. When you've painted it in, you'll, you'll go, man, it's just like the flowers right now. The flowers have not been sealed, and the color is, ah, it's okay. But once you spray it with a clear varnish, those colors really pop. You're turning sideways, dear. Thank you. <laughs> My cameraman. <laughs> I know. Anyway, let's see. Uh, let's see, where are we? We're about halfway through here. Um, let me show you a little bit more of just what I do along with the scratch board. Would anybody like to see more of me scratching or would you like to see more of my artwork? of what can be done, or what would you guys like? Okay, where's Catherine? Yes, Leisha. Okay, does she have her mute on? No, I don't think I can hear her. Okay, now, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry, I need to turn that way. I would like to see, so after you scratch and you have the different layers and then you go back in with paint, um, do you just refer back to the photo that you're painting and then just, and what if the color you apply is not right? Can you then scratch it back okay. out? Let me show you, first of all, Most of the time, I am using, these are ampersand colored scratch inks. And um, you have to mix your own colors with these. Um, what's a, sometimes a little bit easier is some of the markers. And I am now having trouble finding some of the ink markers. Um, if you've got a special color and you just cannot achieve it with these, such as like a bright turquoise, I have the hardest time with a turquoise for some reason. Um, I'll sometimes use the, the colored markers, the ink markers. Um, these are also, um, they are in ink tents pens so again you add you they're like a, a a colored pencil and you color in the area and then you take a watered brush um just like the kids that have paint like that um you do the same thing it doesn't come out as well because of by the time that you get it wet enough to get smooth it's wanting to come back every time you do a brush stroke it comes off the color comes off with the paintbrush so these aren't as as good but sometimes you can't find you just can't find the color you want except for in one of those and so it takes some some uh, working with it but a lot of times you're right i'll just go ahead and use a paintbrush and paint the color in and you want to let it dry probably well, you can till till you can touch it with your hand, and then give it an extra five minutes or so. Then you can actually take your scratch board and scratch out the highlights, and then take some more paints and paint it back in. Now, if you get the wrong color with these, um, you can go back in and scratch it out, and it will leave it almost as white as what you first started with. Never 
exactly right. So once you've decided to put color in, you cannot go back to a black and white, but you can scratch it out and change the color a little bit. Um, so um, you don't want to go from, let's say, oh, I want to do red, and then, oh, I want to change that. Instead of a cardinal, I want to make that a bluebird. You can do it. It's going to be really difficult to take all of that red back out of there. But if you've just put in a little bit, you should be able to, to scratch it right back out and put it and put a different color in. Um, another thing with, um, I'm trying to think of what I was going to say. Um, your colors, oh, with markers, um, you ask if you put, if you put it in a color in, if you can scratch it back out with your colored markers and your pencils, the, the ink tents, um, it leaves more of a stain in there. So again, you know, if you want to go to a lighter, you've put a little bit of, you put dark blue in and you've decided to go to lighter blue, you can go ahead and scratch it out and you're left with a light blue and that works. But if you um, get too dark or a different color, um, you cannot make it white again. Um, does that answer? I'm, I'm looking at my my laptop. In, okay, I see your head. <laughs> okay, Janet. Yes. How long does it take you to do a piece like the dog that you're working on now? Um, it depends, of course, on the size. This is this is an eight by ten. Um, it depends on how much detail is in the picture. Um. Most of what I did right here took me probably about four to five hours just scratching out just a little bit with the fiberglass brush. Um, some pictures take so much more time. I do um, also, I do like senior pictures. I've done, I've done a lot of the 50th anniversary pictures where you've got two individuals and skin takes a forever long um but and long hair you would think that long-haired animals would be the easiest i don't know why maybe i always thought that because it'd be nice smooth and it's not actually the shorter hair the fluffy actually takes the least amount of time uh birds uh, some birds take a long time and some birds don't. Uh, cardinals don't take a whole lot of time, but you get a hummingbird and their little feathers just take forever because they're so tiny and so little delicate. And um, Mike's going to get, oh, I think he's probably going to go get my parrot or my macaw. Um, but it really depends. Now, once you put, if you're wanting to put color into something, it will take you almost twice as long because if you're going to put color, you have to get it all that black ink out of there to put the color back in. So like this one, uh, where am I, honey? Underneath like this like that okay this is a blue macaw and wherever there is yellow or blue i had to take it all the way to white before i painted in the blue so it it does take some time um and like i said hummingbirds are forever um the bald eagles, if I, if I have a black and white bald eagle, their head, of course, is all that white. So you've got to take that out. Um, and the way their feathers ruffle is going to take time. But if it's got black, a lot of black in it still, it doesn't take quite as much time. Some people ask whether you can scratch board a black dog. 
because a lot of people have black dogs. And yes, you really can. You can do a, a lot of scratch board with animals that are black because, especially if they're if you're doing a colored, you know, you, you say, people, are, would you like color in it? And they look at me, well, my dog is black. But the way light shines off of a, <laughs> off of a black animal, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put that over there so they don't keep on hearing my phone. Um, when sunshine lands on a black dog or a white dog, um, it does the same thing as a rainbow. You'll end up with a lot of spectrum colors, a lot of blues and reds and yellows. You would be surprised at how much color I put into a black dog and how much color I put into a white dog. Probably more than a red dog. A red dog, you have to pull all the black out, but they're mostly red. And, um, you know, different shades of red. But, um, but you'd be surprised at the colors of, of black and white dogs. Um, trying to think of what else. Oh, Mike was just handed me the bald eagle. Yeah, this one. Yeah, let's see if I can. You can see how there's the white head and the feathers, but there's the feathers still have a lot of black into it. And also, when I make something that's black and white like this. I've also used a lot of gray in it. Uh, yeah. And one of my, this says uh, black repair. Um, with Scratchboard, if you have taken like this pet portrait, Let's see if I can get it up without. And I accidentally scratched the wrong way in the middle of the dog. Um, you can pretty much cover it up by scratching the hair um, the direction you want it to. It will leave, um, you can pretty much cover it up. However, if you scratch out here, you better plan on putting a flower or something. Luckily, this one has got some flowers that are going to be, let me see the little flowers that are gonna be on the picture. I don't know whether you can see those. Um, and you just, you know, an extra flower. This says you can repair it. You can repair it to a point that it's gray with a black background. So if I'm in here and I've scratched right here on his cheek, can you see? Right here on his cheek, I actually have scratched a little bit too light, but this is going to be a colored piece anyway. So I'm gonna be putting, he is actually um, a light colored dog with brown on his face. So I'm gonna be putting a little, painting in a little bit darker brown. But if I wasn't, if I was going to keep this black and white subject, I would take this uh, scratch repair and paint in in those areas that I want a little bit darker. And so it's still monotone, it's still black and white, but you've got your grays mixed in there too. And so that's, that's the way you repair it. Um, was there anybody, any more questions that you guys can think of? Uh, I had a question. Um, yeah. I was wondering if you had, um, your other artwork is absolutely beautiful. And I was wondering if you had, um, how you were talking about your black dogs that you commission and then you do the light. If you had any examples that you could show us. Do I have any black dogs? 
Oh, okay. Yeah. We've got a little five by seven dachshund. He's got some red in him too, but let me see. Oh yes, that's beautiful. Thank you. But you can see there's a lot of blue in his black coat. Yeah. And, um, let's see here. I had it right there, huh? Okay. That's amazing. But I'm it's the same way with um, with white. Mm -hmm. You know, you peel it out, but you want to you want to show yeah. light coming into it. You don't want a cold picture. If you don't put any color into it, it will be cold. Yeah. It won't show any life to it. Um, and I'm looking the opposite direction. I keep on look, looking at my laptop where you guys are instead of the camera. Oh, good. You guys can't see me. <laughs> um, thank you, dear. Any other questions? There's Catherine. I see Catherine there and Barbara. I have another question. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, I know that you said after you finish that you spray it with like a clear coat to seal it. Yes. And I'm a touchy person and I don't want to touch artwork, but I really kind of do. Yes. Can you seal the texture of it? Yes. Um, Not, um, where did I put it? Um, once you apply the scratch board or the, the, um, acrylic varnish to it and it makes it a scratch resistant to it, you can touch it very gently. Like with this, actually, I can still touch it. Um, can't see too much because just make a black, let me see if I've got, ah. Use this one here. Oh, uh, you can see a little tech. Can you get any kind of where you can see it sideways? I don't think so. There's not a whole lot. You can touch it slightly and feel a very light. Um, I'm trying to think of, there was, have been other ones that I have done that the Ram, had a lot. the Ram, yeah, did have a lot to it. Um, and you could still feel it. Uh, anytime that there is, um, a lot of, let's see, no, he's really soft. Um, there are times where you can, but not every single time. And, and that's as best as I can tell you right now. Once it is sealed, there's just a very light feel to it. But um, uh, I have people touch my artwork a lot. In fact, I will, when I go to art fairs, um, like the Edmund Art Show um, Festival up there, and I'll have a lot of kids come in. And of course, kids always want to touch. And, um, you know, of course, parents are like, don't touch. Well, yeah, it's an $1,000 picture. Um, and I'll say, if you were gentle, you can take one finger and touch it, not your fingernail. You can take your finger and touch it. Because I think it's really important that kids learn about artwork and enjoy it as much. And they enjoy artwork more by touch than what it actually looks like. So I am very pro children learning about artwork and being involved with artwork. And that's one thing in my booths, I always have the scratch art going because I like kids to be able to enjoy it as much as an adult. And I guess I'm also one of these touchy people. I like to, to feel it. So that's a very good question. Anything else? No. 
Um, let me tell you, um, since we've only got a couple minutes more, um, I am, oh, a couple things. I've been asked, do you sell prints? And yes, I do. I sell prints. Here's a print of a wolf that I've done. And also a print of um, a cardinal. Can you see? I can't see the cardinal. Okay. Cardinal's kind of tough to see through the glass. Ah, that's true. I hadn't thought about that. Um, the five by sevens are $19. Um, I don't have a whole lot of the bigger ones, but they're about 24 and up. So, and I'm going more and more toward the bigger prints because I'm also going also with bigger um, pictures. Um, most of my wildlife, um, can, you, can you put that down or is it gonna fall? Can you hand me my other pictures? Um, I am also selling, yes. For this show, I'm doing a lot of gift certificates um, and I can fill it out to the amount that you want. Um, and I am giving a 10% off for this show. So um, if you do purchase it from uh, the gift certificates or if you purchase an item um, during this week, it will be 10% off. Um, I just want to show you a couple of my new pictures that were coming out this season. Um, this is, can you see that? Those are some elk that came out of the um, Washington area. And then also, this is a pack, oops. this is a pack of wolves, along with my other wolves that, um, actually the long wolves too, honey. This is a pack of wolves from Wyoming, from Yellowstone. It is a, a real pack of wolves. Um, I do work from photographs. I don't know whether you can see him. Uh, and I will be selling, I don't have the prints yet for these pictures, but we'll be getting them shortly. And then here are some more wolves that are new this year. And those are also wolves out of Yellowstone National Park. They have, um, those were the wolves that were introduced back into um, Yellowstone National Park. Um, Yellowstone National Park did not have wolves for many years. Um, they had been almost um, eradicated from that area um, from many people coming in and, and hunting them. Um, so it had gone probably, I don't know, 50, 75 years without any wolves in that area. Um, do I have, I don't have, do I have the pack of, of wolves? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Sure. Yeah, we won't worry about that. Um, I tend, I love wolves and I tend to do a lot of wild animals from either Oklahoma, um, into the Rocky Mountains. I was raised, you know, just south of, uh, just east of the foothills of, um, Colorado. So, uh, just south of the Air Force Academy, actually. And, uh, so, um, my... Husky, everybody thought when I was little, at least I thought everybody thought my husky was a wolf running through the, the foothills because we didn't have to have any fences. And so um, I do a lot of a lot of those animals, sure. Mike was just handing me a picture also that I did last year. It's a little dusty. But um, this is a great horn owl that I did. And he is from, also from Wyoming, from Jake's Fork, Wyoming. And um, 
I love working with birds. You know, it's the eagles, the owls, the great big ones. I like cardinals and blue jays too, but those big birds, I just fell in love with. We had an owl waking us up last night. Actually, it was five o'clock this morning. He was hooting outside of our window here. So I know that they're here in, in uh, Oklahoma too. But um, yeah, so um, I do all kinds of pets and anything that can be photographed, you can put on Scratchboard. Um, and I'll show you one more thing. It's a secret. No, it's not a secret. Um, oh, this one's a biggie. And I don't turn that around so you guys can all see it. This is something that I am working on. And I will bring it down. But to where are you looking? You're looking up and I'm bringing it. Can you see the river coming down? This is actually a picture of some mountains in Colorado. And being up close to the foothills of Colorado, I'm so used to those storms coming over the mountains that I had to put clouds in the, the um, photograph had a clear blue sky and I put a clear blue sky in and went nope gotta have clouds gotta have a big old cloud so yeah I took out a lot of that luckily I hadn't gotten too much blue in there and I took it out and then I started working with the grays and the yellows in there and getting that mountain scene in there but that is Scratchboard, where I've taken a lot of the black out on top, as you can see. And over here, let's see, yeah, it's this side. There's going to be some bears that are going to be sitting right here. A mother and her three cubs. And I can't wait to start working on that. Let's go ahead. But, um, it's been kind of a, a strange, as you all know, a strange year that we haven't been able to um, do exactly what we wanted to do. And I would have already had that done um, before, let's see, when were we going to go to Shawnee? Was that April? So um, I haven't been real good about keeping up with my artwork. All the other artists have been saying, oh, we've been quarantined. So that's all I've been doing is doing my artwork. And I'm like going, I can't get to it. I've got so much of the do. I've got laundry and I've got cooking. <laughs> so just lately, have I been getting back into it and, and being good about keeping my business going. But um, anyway, um, I guess we've got to wrap it up and uh, we're going to go ahead and, and get it back over here to Sandra. Perfect. And, uh, Sandra, so I really appreciate you having me. I we, really we really appreciate you doing this and demonstrating all this technique for us. This is amazing. Well, thank you. Um, if they would, if someone's interested in, in doing a commission piece, do they just need to um, contact you on your, your website or your Facebook page? they can contact me on my Facebook page. Um, it might be even better if they left me a message on, um, you know, text me. Uh, okay. My phone number is area code 405-812-9889. Or you can get onto my website. It's janetfunk.com. And there is a place on there. It will go straight to my emails. My email is janetfunk.artist at gmail.com. So it's an easier one since you got the Janet Funk so many times there. <laughs> I put all that contact information in the comments for everybody to access as well. So if you look at the Ooh. chat, um, you can see uh, both your website and um, the Facebook page and your your phone number as well. Um, if you have any questions at all, 
please ask. I, I really enjoy answering questions. And, you know, if you ever, you know, need any advice or any, where do I get this or woo. <laughs> the cameraman's going again. Uh, if I can help with anything at all, please let me know. Well, thank you. And we'll, we've recorded the session, so we'll make it available on YouTube and then highlight you again on the Library Guild page. Great. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. It's been nice seeing you all. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye.